In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Tonight's feast, the feast of Mary, the Holy Mother of God, is primarily a feast about her son, Jesus. In the first reading, we hear of the Lord God's desire to bless us, to bless our families, to let his face shine upon us. And he wants to bless us in a very special way. He wants to bless us with his holy name. And for the attentive listener in today's gospel, on the eighth day, Jesus was circumcised. And it was on this day that the Son of God was given his most holy name, Jesus. The name at which every knee shall bend on earth and the heavens and under the heavens. The most holy and sweet and powerful name of our Savior was given on this day. Today's feast is primarily about Jesus, about who he is. Who is he? He's God. He's Son of the Father. And we see this by what he says and by what he does. In the Gospel of John chapter 8, Jesus tells us that when he is lifted up, he's talking about his crucifixion, that when you see him, you'll come to know that I am. Our Lord, speaking to the Jewish people, is revealing clearly that when you and I look at the Son of God hanging on the cross with faith, when we see him, we can come to see who God is. We can come to see God. It was Jesus' way of revealing his divinity, that he is truly God's Son. When you see the Son of Man lifted up, you will know that I am. We also know that Jesus is God by what he does. He forgives our sins. And only God alone can forgive our sins. Only God alone can bridge the gap that happens between us and him when we offend him, when we sin against him. Jesus also calls the dead by name and they rise to new life. So Jesus clearly reveals to us that he is God, that he is Lord by what he says and by what he does. But Jesus is also man. He's also the son of the Virgin Mary. Jesus has a heart just like you and me. Jesus became man in the womb of the Virgin Mary so that he could be our savior, so that he could bear the burden of our sins upon the cross, so that he could pay the price of our infidelity. So this great feast of Mary, the mother of God, is primarily about her son Jesus and who he is. And Mary, in so many ways, in her flesh, is a living proclamation of the gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Because our Father has done this through the most holy mother of God, through the Blessed Virgin Mary. We see throughout Scripture, one of the things that Jesus loves to do is he loves to speak about his mom. We see this in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Jesus tells us that his mom is going to be one of the signs to prepare for his second coming for his glorious return. Jesus tells us that at the end of time, this amazing sign is gonna appear in the heavens of a woman clothed with the sun. So Jesus painting this powerful and beautiful portrait that when he's about to return in glory, to establish the Father's kingdom, to hand all things over to the Father, one of the ways we're gonna know that that's about to happen is he's going to give us the sign of his mother, of Mother Mary, in the heavens. And it's so fitting, because this is what Mary always does. 
She always prepares the way for her son, Jesus. The great saints tell us that Mother Mary is the quickest, the surest, the fastest way to Jesus. That way, if you tell me that you love the Mother of God, if you love Mother Mary, if you're not growing in your love and intimacy with Jesus, I begin to wonder what type of relationship you're in. Because Mary always leads us deeper and deeper into intimacy with her divine son. So Mary, this amazing sign, and it's because the dragon, the enemy, in Mary's presence, he can't say anything. What the devil strives to do unceasingly is to sow seeds of doubt in your heart and in your mind that God doesn't really truly love you, that God doesn't really truly care, that God isn't really truly present in your life. But in the presence of Mary, the mother of Jesus, the devil remains silent because none of his lies can stand in the presence of the most holy mother of God. Because remember, in her very flesh, she's bearing witness that God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. Then in the first book of the Bible, in chapter three of the book of Genesis, Jesus once again speaks to us about his mom when the Lord God foretells that it will be through a woman, it'll be through a mother that the enemy will be crushed and sin and death destroyed. So after we had all sinned in Adam and Eve, after we were all exiled from our father's kingdom from paradise, after we all embraced the curse of that original sin, the Lord God gives us this hope. He makes this prophecy that it's going to be through a woman, through a mother, that the Savior is going to be born. And it's this Savior, Jesus, who's going to crush the head of the serpent. It's for this reason that the first century of Christians, they had such a deep gratitude to Mother Mary because they understood that it was her yes to, to the Father it was her yes to God that granted us this tremendous gift of our Savior, Jesus. Then we come to the heart of the Bible, to the Gospels in the New Testament, and with this I wrap things up. So we saw recently on the third Sunday of Advent that those three words that Jesus spoke on the cross, behold your mother, and I encouraged you and I invited you and I challenged you to ask Jesus what did he mean when he said those three words to you? When he revealed to you that he wants you to have an intimate and loving relationship with his mom in the same way that he loves her. So we already saw at the heart of the gospel as Jesus is working our salvation on the cross, he reveals that his mother is going to be a part of God's plan of salvation. And this only makes sense because God has chosen to save us as a family. And we are so blessed to have a heavenly mother to share the very same mother of Jesus. Then we saw in today's second reading that the Lord God has chosen to adopt us as his beloved sons and daughters. And the Lord God wants to prove to you that you're his son, that you're his daughter, because he wants to pour his love, his Holy Spirit into your hearts. To be a Christian, it means you have God's Holy Spirit within you. And what God's Holy Spirit does is it cries out, Abba, Father. It inserts you in that same intimate relationship that Jesus enjoys with the Father. So to be God's son, to be God's daughter, means that you and I are filled with God's love. We're filled with his Holy Spirit, and we cry out, Abba, Father. So once again, Mother Mary was present on the Feast of Pentecost, Together with the apostles and with the disciples, they prayed together. And Mother Mary prepared their hearts. She prepared their lives to receive this outpouring of God's love. 
I'm going to keep reminding you, one of God's handicaps is he can't just give you a little bit of himself. He wants to give you everything. And if you're not receiving everything, it's never because God is holding back. It's because there's an obstacle in your supply lines. There's a kink. There's a leak. There's something blocking God's grace and power moving. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, to conclude, what did the shepherds see on this day? When they came, they saw a man, a holy man, Joseph. They saw a holy woman, Mary. And they saw an infant, a baby, lying in a manger. And when they saw that, they were filled with wonder and amazement and praise. And their hearts overflowed with joy because of what they saw and what they heard. So what did they see? They saw Jesus, God's Son, who had veiled his divinity, his true Godhead. He had veiled it through that of an infant child. Now, what about us? In a few moments, what are we going to see? We're going to see bread and wine. But with the gift of faith, we can truly see Jesus. Jesus veiling his presence, veiling his divinity behind the appearance of bread and wine. So my brothers and sisters, for those of you that have ears to hear, for those of you that want to receive the fullness of God's gift, we turn to Mother Mary and we say this beautiful prayer, Mary, prepare my heart to welcome and receive Jesus. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.